Hello everyone and welcome to episode 27 of ARM Template Masterclass. Today we're going to be having a look at a new feature in BICEP which is the BICEP config file. So the config file allows you to specify some settings that are hopefully going to help make your life a bit easier when you're developing uh, BICEP templates. Um, and really the config file is around two areas, um, modules and linter analyzer uh, in VS Code and, and so on. Um, so we'll have a look at how that works and how you can configure that um, to do what you want. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. We've got our file that we created last time, which is uh, referencing some modules that are stored in our BICEP registry. And we're gonna create our BICEP config file. So it's just a new JSON file, called BICEP config.json, create that. Uh, you can have multiple BICEP config JSON files. Um, at different levels and so on, the you will just use the one that's closest to the actual module you're working on. So create our JSON file. And first thing we're going to do is look at the module options. And there are two things we can do with modules. First one is aliases, and the second one is credential preferences. We'll, we'll look at aliases first. To do that, what we need to do is create a module aliases section, and you can see you get full IntelliSense support on this. So we'll create that. And you can create aliases both for bicep registries and template specs for the older ARM template based template specs if you want to use those. We're gonna focus on bicep registries, but you can, can do template specs as well. And we're going to create an alias for our registry. And so we need a name for that. So we'll call that, um, let's call it bicep reg. And then within this section, we need to give it a reference to the actual registry. So we'll select that. And we'll just knit back to our other file and see that the name of the registry is this section. And so we'll add that in. And so that gives us an alias um, called bicep reg that we can now use. So if we hop back to our other file, so instead of having this hard coded here, what we can do is get rid of that change this first colon to a forward slash, and then paste in our uh, path to our registry. We've also got a syntax error in there, so that this needs to be a colon. And you can see now that's that's picked that up. And so you can see now that's working and we've replaced the actual full name with that alias. So that obviously makes it a bit shorter, but it also means you know, if we need to change our registry, we can just go back into our basic config file and change it once, rather than in all of our uh, references. We can also add a second option. Um, so we're going to create a new alias here and we're going to call this modules. We're going to use the same registry path. But we have another option here for module path. So we can point at a specific set of folders or even modules. So what we're going to do here is we are going to use this bit. So we can add that in there. So now instead of having to leave our main point, our main section, you're having the registry and then this path, what we can actually do is get rid of all of that and replace that with modules and then point that and then use the storage module within that folder. So you can use that module path to shorten things further, point at specific folders or even specific module. Um, but now our alias is working, that's a lot simpler. And again, if we need to change anything, we can do it in our config file rather than in every reference to it in the actual uh, code. So that's the first thing you can do with modules is aliases. The second is you can look at the order of preference that you will use um, for talking to um, the module repositories. If you remember, we're using a container registry. This you need to authenticate to that registry. And you can do it with various different ways. You can use Azure CLI credentials. You can use Azure PowerShell. Um, you can manage identity if you're on, a, on a, an Azure machine and so on. You can configure in here the preference or the order you want to use those in. So what we do here is we can add this cloud section. And then within here, we've got this credential precedence section. And then within that, you can specify one of these values or multiple of these values, but in the right order. So let's, you know, we want to use Azure CLI. Then we want to use Azure PowerShell. 
Um, actually, let's put let's put managed identity at the top. So if you're on a if you're on a build agent, for example, it will use that. But obviously on my local machine, it will fail that. So it will try Azure CLI and then Azure PowerShell. So we can configure um, however we want to do that. So in addition to modules, we can also do is we can add some configuration settings for the linter. So the actual when we're doing linting in VS Code or, or anything like that, um, we can configure how we want the that to work. So we add a new section and we've got this analyzer section. You can see it fills out a lot of that for us. So there's a few options we can do here. Um, you've got this core section, which is about the, the core analyzers that come with it. I can see potentially, you know, if there are additional things added in the future or maybe custom options and um, that'll be expanded. Um, but you can set whether they're enabled or not. Um, you also have another option, which I guess the IntelliSense doesn't add in by default, which is verbose, and you can set that to true if you want to have uh, some extra verbose logging. Um, and then you've got these rules, and you can define basically what level of warning or, or so on that you want for each rule in the linter. So things like you know picking out admin names, not being literal, hard coded environment URLs, and so on. So you know we can change these from warning to error. Or maybe even, you know, we'll go a bit more detail. We want, we want this one just to show informational messages as well. And we don't want that one on at all, so we'll turn that off. Um, and this will configure how this works within um, within the linter. Uh, you know, if you change them to error, then they'll show up as errors in the linter. Uh, and actually, when you try and run the, uh, the bicep build, it will actually fail because of the fact that they're errors. Warnings will always just give you a warning message and it will continue and so on. So you can tweak those linter settings um, if you don't like the way the defaults are set up. There are a few other ones you can change You can change within here as well. So if we look at the no hard coded environment URLs, we can add a section in here for disallowed hosts. And this is this, again, will give us the defaults. Um, so this determines um, you know, which URLs it's going to check um, for the no hard coded environment URL section. Um, so you can tweak this however you want um, to add in your own custom URLs and so on. So you can customize the linter in that way. So that's a very quick overview of how the bicep config JSON file works. There's not too many settings in at the moment, but there are some fairly useful ones. I particularly like the module aliases, should make life a lot easier. Um, but I I anticipate that over time, as Bicep gets more functionality, we'll see that config file used more and more. So it's probably worth getting in the habit of creating one when you, you use your projects. Maybe you could even create a template one that you use for most projects. Um, so yeah, I think that's going to be quite useful. Uh, hopefully you found it interesting, and I will see you next time.